Hey, what's going on guys? Arden and Ben from At The Letters. We are here in beautiful Dunedin, Florida. We have a really cool opportunity today. We are gonna walk through the brand new Toronto Blue Jays player development complex with club president and CEO, Mark Shapiro. Spent a lot of time here over the years, but not in the last two years. And since I was here last, this place looks totally different, really renovated, just completely new facility that's gonna really change a lot of things about this team. So excited to take a look. This is your third child, so uh, <laughs> take this through, please. Definitely the longest labor. Um, <laughs> I would say, you know, th there are a couple things kind of overarching to think about when we went into planning um, and researching and touring other facilities, and that was, you know, to ensure that this wasn't just bricks and mortar, it wasn't just a building, but it was an opportunity, an opportunity to foster a championship culture, so kind of shift immediately the feeling that you feel when you walk in the building, clearly to drive performance. I mean, that's kind of the obvious that the resources and tools and how do we ensure that there's the technology and infrastructure that will allow us to adapt as the game continues to adapt, to be best in class day one, but to stay best in class. Um, and, and I think that, you know, thinking about design as something that fosters culture and <clears throat> helps you build championships. So. Um, when you we talk about other facilities, you mean like EPL, you know, some of yeah. the finest ones yeah, that I you're going to find. Uh, some of the biggest universities in the U.S. that have elite sports programs like the University of Michigan and, and others, uh, NFL teams, NBA teams, EPL teams. EPL is probably the most analogous just because they've got the academy teams, you know, the progression of academy teams up to their first team or their, you know, their major league team. So there was some interesting you know, anal analogies that we could think about in their facilities. So, so you went over there and actually, yeah, took, that's, yeah, a great, Tottenham, that's a great, that's a great business trip. Yeah, that was a <laughs> great cool, trip. That was right? a great trip. But everything was on a condensed time frame. You know, yeah. we want, there's an opportunity cost involved. Like we wanted to get it done and get in here because, you know, the competitive advantage was being in the building, not just planning the building. The well, last time I was here was a couple of years ago for obvious reasons. And man, it looked a lot different then. So I'm excited to see it. I <laughs> well, when we get outside, like every now and then, I remind myself by glancing across at the, the old building. Yeah. So we'll go over there on the way back. But, you know, obviously the, the mission's simple and clear for everyone to see. Start, we'll start quickly in the, you know, a player lounge. You know, the, the goal of this room was not to get a lot of use during spring training, but to really be thinking about the, the 16, 17, 18 year olds that are here, you know, when no one else is thinking about this facility in the middle of summer when it's, you know, 95 degrees and 100% humidity outside. And this is a lounge that, you know, guys can play games in here, uh, ping pong, dominoes, and, and just kind of get out of the heat and get away from the baseball stuff if they're, and not just be stuck at the hotel. It's funny, the one piece of advice that we heard uh, from all the baseball facilities we toured was you'll never have enough storage. Oh, right. interesting. So that's like the one thing that we always heard, you know, not only can we do enough, do enough laundry in there, <laughs> but, you know, we've got the movable storage racks, you know, kind of a cool thing, the roll-up doors here and in the ballroom or the cart room right next door where they can wheel their golf carts right up to the door, you know, loaded up with the balls, loaded up with the, with the uh, drink, you know, the hydration bins and just, you know, take the carts right out to the fields. So it's kind of a cool. Feature. This is for big league and minor league. This side. is just minor league. Oh, just minor yeah, league. Major league has its own storage area wow. uh, and its own washroom dryers. So this is just serving the minor league, which is, you know, 200, you know, players when we're in our max capacity and then another 75, 80 staff. So it's a, it's still a big number of people. We're so <laughs> how many athletes would be in here during the MLB season? Like, uh, I mean, I would say probably 70, you know, it just, it will vary, you know, but depending on how many guys are we have. Yeah, I would like to hope that, you know, in the winter we've got like a hundred, you know, guys, 150 guys down here. That's, that's the goal. Um, but it just depends. Uh, so we've got 200 player lockers on the minor league side, not including major league in three different locker rooms at all are kind of the appointments, the, 
the restrooms are they're all a little bit nicer each level you go. I'm sure the, I'm sure the players notice that, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so subtle, you know, but it's meant to be meaningful. So, you know, IPTVs everywhere, they've got the, we can shift from the schedule yeah. to anything else. We'll have like awards or like areas of competition that we we'll want to point out and we can update those. No, that's great. I, I am noticing the plate appearances this, uh, I know that's strike a walk for the pitchers, obviously, but I know swing decisions has been huge. This swing spring. decisions big so, also. Just take this is the triple A, so you can see you can just get a quick look. They're much nicer, they're wood lockers. And in the past, this would have been, if I'm not mistaken, this all would have been kind of one, one room, room, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, you know, it, it's almost like it's almost like overwhelming and depressing. First of all, you've got 175 guys sharing washroom, you know, it's just like it. This is just a much more positive environment to be in. And each one would have its own showers and its own, each has its own, yeah, each, yeah and like the the. Like the materials are a tiny bit nicer. Um, so now we're going to go into the classroom. So like a, lo a lot of thought, surprising amount of thought given to this. You know, we researched almost every team that we saw, sport, regardless of sport, had theater style. You know, like the exactly like you a picture a movie theater, like graduated seating, all faced at one speaker. We wanted something to be a little more immersive where you're interacting with each other. You don't feel like you're just talking at people. In addition, we've got like state of the art um, conference, you know, video camera. So like Ross, Ross can like talk to the pitching camp down here from Toronto. And we'll get, we have a projection screen that drops down out of the ceiling right there. The, the smart TVs they can actually write on um, and then get better every day, get better every day in every language you could ever imagine over there. So a couple things right here, we'll just stop for a second. So obviously we've got, uh, you know, instead of doing like a standard, you know, pitching coordinator's office, we have, you know, three different collaboration rooms, a pitching collaboration room, a hitting collaboration room, and a defense and base running collaboration room. And, you know, it's meant so that the pitching coaches from every level can kind of get together, talk about, our individual planning for our players along with, you know, anything they're kind of researching or thinking about. And, um, you know, you can tell by looking in there, it's, you know, it gets a lot of work and, you know, we've got a lot of cool spaces for staff to hang out, but they, when they're working and thinking about our, you know, our season and preparing for it or working on the, the players that are here, you know, those are great spaces. The other thing right behind you, there's a consult room. It says consult room number four. I think we have 13 different consult rooms. Um, meant to, uh, you know, they're meant to be uh, flexible. You know, one we've already converted to a sleep room. They're all different in sizes. They've all got the ability to kind of just stick your laptop, you know, toggle onto the video and you can run video. Um, most of them have whiteboards, you know, um, behind you. I think that wall's a white, but they can write. You'll see if you walk into some of them, they're, they're writing on the whiteboards. There's spaces for players to duck into to meet with a mental performance coach, nutritionist, a coach, to meet with each other, you know, for us to meet, you know, there's never enough space as well as just to be flexible for us in the future. It's a minor league staff locker room. So the minor league staff has the staff locker room, the collaboration spaces, and a staff lounge that I'll show you. So they've got a lot of, it's a nice, nice staff locker room. And there's always, there's never enough staff lockers um, because you bring over staff in the Dominican and everywhere else. And we've got plenty in here your staffs run about you know yeah. a dozen 15 deep these staff days is, too staff right? is like <laughs> the fastest growing area of player development in general yeah. you know this is I not think. a small room no oh, wow and i like how you have the pitchers on the wall beside the pitching room your holidays and your yeah. steves and the hitting room hitting room here defense and base running when did you when did the planning start for this i mean i would say soon after i got here it was kind of a quick evaluation um, do we stay in Dunedin? Is there, you know, is there something better than there? Is there something better in Dunedin that would fit everything in one spot? And it was, but trying to make that decision as quickly as possible because just the opportunity cost um, of waiting, right. you know, looking for the perfect site. Um, and then once we kind of accepted we were okay still buying the games um, over to the stadium, you know, we started to work on design, you know. So now it's 22 and that might've been 16, something like that. Probably 16, probably late in 16 or something like that. It's pretty quick. Yeah, it really yeah, was, you know, for quick. building this size or complex yes. this size. A little pandemic in the middle there, no big deal. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, that muted the impact, you know, on the, to start.
Now you became pandemic manager for about two years then. Yeah. Level of excellence, we kind of recreated that here. I mean, we're going down that hall, Charlie. You can't get away. So now, now we'll kind of start to transition down the spine of the building right. and then go over to the major league side and check that out. This I also s stole from one of the EPL facilities. Uh, you know, it's just a cool space. It's got, you know, strength, physios, mental performance coaches, trainers all to get all, you know, for the minor leagues, all officing together, which is kind of, you know, kind of foster collaboration um, at, adjacent to the weight room and the, tra and the minor league training room. This is the minor league training room. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Cleo loves water. He might just jump in. The <laughs> what are you doing? So, you know, just the hot and cold plunge pools, which are key to recovery um, for the minor league side, for the major league side. And then we researched a lot of different, you know, uh, different types of pools that are used for both rehabilitation, for conditioning and recovery. Um, and we ended up, you know, I thought we would do an underwater treadmill, which is what we had, you know, in our Goodyear facility when I was with the Indians or the Guardians. But now, you know, now it felt like every European team we talked to, everybody building a new facility in general, talked about the different heights and depths of a pool. So you can deload the body if you're doing, you know, rehabilitation work with four feet, five feet, six feet. Um, you can condition, you can just straight out use it for a conditioning or swimming. So, um, as you've been kind of sharing this with, you know, players who have been in the organization for a long time or coaches for that matter, staff, have any kind of, re have any people really reacted, you know, with surprise or like really positively as, you know, I mean, every, whether they're coming from another organization, um, or whether they're, they experience the old and they're experiencing the new here. It has a similar effect. Again, there is definitely some wow factor, but I think the real intent is like we care. You know, like we're thinking about it. We're there's no there's no nothing we wouldn't stop to help you be the best you can be. Um, there's no there's no limit for how much we're thinking about it or what we would do to put you in a position to be successful. So um, it's meant to kind of emphasize that bond. Um, and that commitment to resources and to the players. So in that way, it's kind of a statement. You know, we talk a lot about like making it the best place to play. Um, this is a big part of making it the best place to play. It's some a major league trainer room with some major league players in it. <laughs> are growing up with some of these tools and are coming to expect some of them, right? Like the game, it is changing to a different type of athlete now. The yeah. Game. Yeah. I mean, they're. I mean, a lot of what we're competing with is guys that are going to facilities elsewhere throughout you know the u.s or you know someplace else and so we want them to have to know that they can't get anything better anyplace else you know we've got uh, the kitchen that serves both the major and minor leagues so if you look through here you can see a minor league dining area over there which we if you want to we can go into or we just you know there's a room that's right Looks probably like twice this size over right. there um, not quite as nice, but still nice. Yeah. But this is probably the biggest. This is the biggest kitchen we've saw we've seen in professional sports. Wow. I mean, that whole side of it is a walk-in fridge and freezer cool. that allows us to feed up to 350, 400 people daily, which we're doing right now, two meals a day. Wow. Um, and you know, we're we're feeding our guys all year round, which is something we never did before. In the old facility, we could we couldn't even cook. There we had to bring it in. We had right, to prepare yeah. offsite and bring it in. It was basically like a high school cafeteria. So we've got a full-time kitchen staff, you know, fresh meals every day, grab and goes, you know, like you can see in the cases here. Um, we got grab and goes everywhere. 